The military wields immense power, but with that power comes the potential for terrifying consequences. We're about to delve into the dark corners of military history, uncovering secrets with repercussions that ripple through society. From human experimentation to devastating weapons programs, these are the stories with the power to shock you, make you question authority, and reveal the chilling cost of unchecked force. From underground bunkers to remote deserts, these enclaves of the unknown have sparked more conspiracy theories and speculation than any sci-fi movie. Are they testing advanced aircraft, harboring extraterrestrial secrets, or conducting experiments far beyond our wildest imaginations? Buckle up and prepare for a journey into the heart of the world's most impenetrable fortresses, where the line between fact and fiction blurs and the truth is stranger than fiction. Starting off our list today, we have Kapistan Yar in Russia. This place, often shrouded in an aura of intrigue and mystery, is a Russian rocket launch and development site that has fueled countless conspiracy theories and urban legends since its establishment in 1946. Dubbed the Russian Roswell, it has been at the epicenter of UFO folklore in Russia, with numerous sightings and alleged alien encounters reported over the decades. The secrecy surrounding its operations only amplifies the allure, with speculations ranging from hidden extraterrestrial artifacts to advanced undisclosed aerospace technologies. While it serves as a significant hub for Russia's aerospace endeavors, its mysterious past and the restricted access to the site have made it a fertile ground for outlandish theories and urban legends. My favorite. Next up, we have Camp Peary, commonly referred to as the Farm, is a site nestled in Virginia in the United States, and it is shrouded in a veil of secrecy that feeds the imagination and fuels countless conspiracy theories. Officially designated as a military reservation, it is widely reputed to be the CIA's premier training facility for spies and intelligence operatives. That's like the coolest thing in the world to me. I would love to be a spy. This cloak and dagger aura is compounded by the tight-lipped nature of its operations and the near impenetrable security surrounding the site, which naturally gives rise to speculations ranging from advanced espionage training methods to covert experiments and beyond. The allure of Camp Peary is not just in what is known, but in the mysteries and possibilities of what might lie within its guarded confines. This blend of fact, speculation, and mystery ensures that this site remains one of America's most interesting and captivating secret facilities. Next up on our list today, we have Huanyang Tan, which is in China. This place is full of mystery, largely due to a very intriguing discovery made there. A vast scale model of a disputed border area between China, specifically Aksai Chin, a region administered by China but claimed by India. The model, roughly the size of several football fields, was spotted on satellite images, sparking a flurry of speculation. While the official explanation suggests it is likely used for military training, giving troops a detailed 3D perspective of the terrain they might encounter, this has not stopped a wave of theories, of course. People have suggested purposes ranging from advanced weapon testing to extraterrestrial communication. This place is full of secrets the public is just waiting to know the truth about, but the truth is, we will likely never know. Next up on our list today, we have Zitker in Russia. Okay, another one of those secret Russian facilities. This place has captivated the imagination of conspiracy theorists. I mean, what doesn't capture their imagination? But also military aficionados. Dubbed by some as Russia's Area 51, this facility is rumored to nestle within the confines of Kapustin Yar missile test range that we already spoke about, which itself is a site of considerable speculation due to its historic ties to the Soviet Union's early forays into space and missile technology. Urban legends paint Zitker as a subterranean labyrinth teeming with alien technology and clandestine government experiments. Tales of UFO crash retrievals, reverse engineering of extraterrestrial artifacts, and even advanced propulsion research echo through the corridors of conspiracy forums, fueling a narrative that blends Cold War secrecy with sci-fi 
by Mystique. I'm just saying, Bob Lazar probably loves this place. While concrete evidence remains as elusive as the whispers of alien encounters, Zitker's allure persists, an unexplained secret base where the limits of technology and reality itself seem to blur. Moving on down our list, we have the Los Alamos National Laboratory, which is located in the scenic New Mexico. This place is not only a cradle of scientific innovation, but also a fertile ground for the imagination. Established during World War II as part of the Manhattan Project, its primary mission was to design and build the atomic bomb. Most of us probably saw Oppenheimer, so I feel like we have a bit of an idea as to what this time in history was like. This clandestine origin has sown the seeds of mysteries that have flourished into various theories and legends. While it is revered for its contributions to nuclear science, space exploration, and national security, Los Alamos also wades through a swamp of speculative tales ranging from alien research to time travel experiments. Despite its transparent achievements in science and technology, the shroud of secrecy that once enveloped its operations feeds public curiosity and fuels tales that tread the fine line between fact and fiction. Next up on our list we have the Tonopah Test Range, ensconced in the remote reaches of Nevada. This place is a swath of land that has long been the focal point of intense speculation. Officially, it serves as a key site for the testing of advanced weapons systems and aerospace technology, playing a pivotal role in the US military's research and development endeavors. Yet, its veil of secrecy and restricted access has painted it as a hub of extraterrestrial research, secret government experiments, and futuristic aircraft testing grounds that are years ahead of their time. This place remains quite the mystery. What are they doing out there in the Nevada desert? It's the question on everyone's minds. Next up we have the Voluchinsk submarine base in Russia. A submarine base. Oh my god, it really doesn't get more secretive than that. I don't know, I'm kind of afraid of submarines. I don't know if that's like irrational or not, but it just kind of freaked me out. They're so large. This place is located on the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia, and it is a pivotal yet very mysterious naval installation. Officially known as Rybot, nuclear submarine base, it serves as the home port for a significant portion of Russia's nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine fleet. Say that five times fast, holy. This base's remote and inhospitable location, combined with the inherent stealth and destructive power of its submarine inhabitants, shrouds this place in an aura of mystery and foreboding. Urban legends and theories surrounding this base often focus on hypothetical underwater aliens bases, or even just covert undersea operations, with some suggesting that the base's submarines are involved in missions or encounters with extraterrestrial technology beneath the Pacific Ocean's depths. I truly could not make this up. Next up on our list today, we have the Tool Air Base in Greenland. This place is the United States' northernmost military installation, and it is a site covered in the icy mists of mystery and intrigue. Situated well within the Arctic Circle, this remote outpost has been a beacon, largely due to its extreme location and strategic importance. While officially it serves as a radar station and a key node in the ballistic missile early warning system, its isolated and harsh environment has only worked to fuel the speculation about scary activities and top secret experiments. Rumors range from underground facilities burrowing into the Arctic ice to be a staging ground for space weapons or even UFO related research. Despite these colorful tales, the site's critical role in military and aerospace operations is undeniable, standing as a silent sentinel in one of the most desolate places on Earth. Alright, starting off our top two, we have the Holloman Air Force Base in the United States, nestled in the arid landscapes of New Mexico. This place is an epicenter of aviation and aerospace innovation, but of course, it is close in secrecy. Renowned for its high-speed test track, where cutting-edge aircraft and technology are pushed to their limits, Holloman has etched its name into the annals of military lore. However, it is not just the technological feat.
feats that draw attention. Whispers of UFO sightings and extraterrestrial engagements have swirled around its parameters. While firmly rooted in its mission of advancing aerial prowess, Holloman Air Force Base remains a place where rumors of alien abductions have happened to Air Force sergeants working at the facility. Known for its infamous missing Project Grudge Report 13 after the mysterious death of Sergeant Jonathan P. Lovett in 1956, Holloman Air Force Base is certainly one of the strangest bases on this list. And finally on our list today we have Area 6. Unlike its more famous neighbor, Area 51, Area 6 has managed to maintain a lower profile, yet it harbors its own strange allure. Officially, this remote outpost is designated for drone testing and other aerial experiments conducted by the Department of Energy and Department of Defense. However, its secluded location and stringent security measures have ignited the public imagination, leading to speculation that it might actually be a hotbed for activities far more secretive than acknowledged. Tales and theories range from experimental aircraft and advanced weapons testing to more outlandish claims of extraterrestrial collaborations. I have a theory for you. What if Area 6 is actually the place where the most secretive things happen and Area 51 is just used as like a sort of cover up? Like, oh yeah, look here at how secretive this place is. Well, it's actually Area 6 hiding mermaids and aliens and whatever else is out there that we don't know about. Number 10, Project Stargate. If you've watched Stranger Things, then this one probably sounds familiar to you. In the show, Eleven started off as an experiment to psychically spy on the Russians, and turns out, this was actually real. In the 1970s in California and later in Maryland, the CIA recruited numerous men and women who claimed they had ESP or extrasensory perception. People with ESP typically say that they can read minds or move objects without touching them. They were recruited to try and help uncover military and domestic intelligence secrets. Mostly they just wanted them to spy on the Russians by reading their minds. The government covered it up of course because why would they want people knowing they're trying to use magic powers to win a war. But in 2017, when 12 million pages of records were declassified, all of the information about the so-called Project Stargate became public knowledge. People learning that they had been using the men and women to locate hostages and even track fugitives throughout the states. Number 9. Vault 7 Vault 7 was definitely never meant to make it to the public eye, but unfortunately for the CIA, it got leaked. So what actually is Vault Vault 7. Back in 2017, WikiLeaks started releasing a series of CIA documents. Vault 7 was a group of documents that contained hacking systems that were either developed or otherwise obtained by the CIA. For the most part, it should make you wary of your technology and how the government is using it. Many people know that apps will track our searches and data to learn about us and maybe even sell it to malicious companies, but it's much more than that. Weeping Angel has the ability to turn a Samsung television into a recording device, even if it appears that your television is switched off. Vault 7 also contained the ability to intercept all your iPhone messages before they got encrypted through apps like WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. And according to the documents, the CIA can allegedly take over your phone by exploiting vulnerabilities, but Apple has said that they patch these vulnerabilities as soon as they're aware of them. Number 8. Battalion 316 Intelligence Battalion 316 went through a few different names throughout its existence, but it was pretty much always functioning for the same reason. They were an army unit in Honduras that was responsible for carrying out political assassinations, and even kidnapping and causing pain to people who were seen as potential political competition throughout the 1980s. The group received both support and training from the CIA, even receiving their training at United States military bases. They were a military kill squad that definitely wasn't known for being friendly, committing various crimes like terrorism, misogyny, ethnic cleansing, and even so-called crimes against humanity. Their goal to remain in power in Honduras failed, leaving behind a long list of innocent victims. In 1996, members of the US Congress
Congress asked President Bill Clinton to release the documentation about the country's involvement with the human rights violations that took place in Honduras, and this is when we learned about the battalion. Number 7, MK Ultra. Let's once again return to the Red Scare and the United States fight against Russians and communism. During the Cold War, they came under the belief that the communists had invented a drug that would allow them to control human minds, and the US wanted a piece of that, starting their own research into the technique under the name Project MK Ultra, trying to find their own mind control substance that could be turned into a weapon. It ran from the 50s to the 60s and led to many unknowing or even unwilling subjects being given illicit substances. The experiments were apparently covertly funded in American universities and research facilities, but it turns out that the experiments also took place in prisons and detention centers in the US, Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. The goal was to destroy the current mind and replace it with something new. Attempts included using electric shocks and illicit substances. For some, the experiments were fatal and many others had their lives completely changed. Number 6. Operation Cyclone Operation Cyclone became known as one of the longest and most expensive covert operations taken on by the CIA, costing around $630 million per year for a whole decade. So what was Operation Cyclone and why was the government pouring so much cash into it? It was an operation that worked to arm and finance militant Islamic groups during the military intervention by the USSR. The goal was to aid anti-Soviet resistances outside of the United States. They gave loans, aircrafts, weapons, and other military assistance to the groups in Afghanistan, costing the United States government billions of dollars for these so-called care packages. Eventually, the Soviets were pushed out of Afghanistan, but conspiracy was still spinning. Many of the weapons ended up being sold in local markets instead of going to the rebels, and some people believe that Osama bin Laden and the Al Qaeda received assistance from the US military. Number 5. Operation Ajax In the 1950s, a coup took place in Iran, and the CIA documents about it weren't released until they were pressured to a total 64 years later. As it turns out, the agency played a large role in the coup that led to the end of the current Iranian Prime Minister, a rise in nationalism, and sour US-Iranian relationships remaining into the 21st century. The motivation was oil. The US and UK wanted Iran's oil, but their new Prime Minister made it inaccessible to them. So the two countries conspired to overthrow him and get the oil back. The coup seemed to fail, and the CIA sent a message to their base in Iran calling it off. But the CIA officer who received it said, nah, we're not done here. So the next day, with crowds allegedly hired by the CIA, the coup, or Operation Ajax, went through and the Prime Minister was overthrown. The monarchy and oil fields restored in the country. Anti-Western sentiment also being restored and growing to new and extreme levels. Number 4. The Five Eyes Are you familiar with one of the farthest reaching intelligence and espionage agencies in the world? You are probably a part of it and don't even know it. It is the once secret Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. After World War II, the US and UK came together to create an information sharing alliance as a result of how important communication was for them during the war effort. And in 1956, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand were added to this group. The classification status on these documents was USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, eyes only. And that was obviously a bit wordy, so they shortened it down to five eyes. It has been operating for 70 years now and is used for surveillance and sharing classified information between the five countries. The alliance was especially important during the Cold War when the countries shared a lot of information like the location of Soviet weapons in North America. The alliance was kept a secret until documents of the original UK and USA agreement were released back in 2010. Number 3. Operation PB Success Similarly to Operation Ajax, Operation PB Success was a covert CIA military operation that took place in another country, this time Guatemala. This was another coup that took place only a year after the one in Iran in 1954. At the time, Guatemala had a very new democracy, only being on their second democratic 
democratically elected president. But the United States saw him as a threat, this being due to his allowance of the Guatemalan Communist Party to act freely and land reform movements that threatened US industries. The CIA then worked through various different plans of action to overthrow the Guatemalan government, including assassination and faking tensions between the country and Honduras. They spread false information, placed anonymous phone calls, and hired anti-communist students to create a fake opposition. Eventually, the president stepped down and their democracy was seen as unfavorable. The United States training that the Guatemalan military now had led to a war lasting decades, tearing apart the country. But PB's success was a success as it worked, and they were able to deny CIA involvement, until the documents were released in 1997. Number 2. The Secret War We're once again fighting communism, this time in Vietnam. But while the Vietnam War was taking place, a smaller secret war was taking place in Laos, attempting to stop communism from spreading to Southeast Asia. The Americans essentially used the countries of Laos and Cambodia to fight their own war against northern Vietnam and communism, using their tribes as their soldiers. While it was clear that the small armies had no hopes of truly winning against northern Vietnam, the United States and the CIA continued on with their fight, devastating the country and peoples of Laos and Cambodia. They came out of the war with their land and lives completely lost and changed, but the CIA wrote it down in their history books as a success, disregarding the country's sacrifice. The CIA's historical retrospective on the situation not being released until many years later. Number 1. Operation Condor It's the Cold War again and the United States government are fighting against terrorism, this time under the code name Operation Condor. It was a campaign of political repression and so called state terror that was backed by the US and CIA. It involved many heinous activities like kidnapping, killings, political espionage, and much more, all taking place throughout South America. The CIA chose to describe it as a cooperative effort by the intelligence slash security services of several South American countries to combat terrorism and subversion. But really, it was a lot more than that. Condor's key members were Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and later Brazil. The United States provided them with planning, coordination, technical support, and military training all routed through the CIA. It led to many military dictatorships and numerous deaths throughout South America. And there is so much detail and information on this one that if you want it, you're just going to have to look it up for yourself. Starting off this countdown, we have Operation Sea Spray. On September 20th, 1950, a US Navy ship off of the coast of San Francisco used a giant hose to spray a cloud of microorganisms into the air. This was part of the military's test to see how a biological weapon attack would affect the 800,000 people that lived there. It was called Operation Sea Spray. They continued these tests for seven days without any citizen knowing what they were doing. It was said that this was one of the first large scale biological weapon trials. In the end, it was believed that the residents all inhaled at least 5,000 of the particles. This attack was responsible for at least one death. But it was have thought to cause a series of infections and may have been responsible for a series of heart valve infections. It wasn't until the 1970s did the citizens realize that they were literally the military's guinea pigs. Moving on at number 9, we have the biological weapons attack. This is another biological weapons attack test that was done without citizens even knowing. Basically, a bunch of low flying planes would fly down through the Midwest, spraying bacteria and chemical powders all across the land. This time, you could see what they were spraying. So the military lied and was like, oh, we're just testing a way to mask the whole city in order to protect it, you know, in case of an attack. Lies. Now, one of the chemicals that they used was zinc cadmium sulfide. It is highly toxic and can cause cancer. Thankfully, they found that it, and I quote, did not expose residents of the United States and Canada to chemical levels considered harmful. But in 2012, sociology professor Lisa Martino Taylor claimed that there was a spike in cancer rates that could be connected back to the chemicals, which she alleges were radioactive. That's insane. And then the military just didn't comment on that. In our 8 spot, we have Project Stargate. Apparently, between 1972 to 1995, the Pentagon spent $20 million using psychics to try and spy on their enemies and see what they were up to. So they enlisted the help of men and women who claimed to have ESP powers. They would help to find hostages or would trace the path of criminals on the run. 
They literally thought that they were onto something here. But in the end, people thought it was stupid and the project was seized, wasting millions of dollars. In our seventh spot today, we have the Inner Armor. Ever wanted to become a real life superhero with cool powers? Well, the government thought that they could actually make this happen. They called it Project Inner Armor. They wanted to find a way to give humans superhuman abilities, like to dive down deep without any equipment or to survive after being shot. Dr. Michael Callahan, head of the project, said, and I quote, The goal is to make soldiers kill proof against all sorts of conditions, including infectious diseases, chemical, biological, and radioactive weapons, temperature and altitude extremes, and harsh natural environments. That's insane. They're literally trying to create mutant soldiers. In our sixth spot, we have the Norfolk Naval Supply Center experiment. In 1951, the military decided to execute some tests at the Norfolk Naval Supply Center in Virginia. This is a massive base that equips the US Navy. So what they did was fill crates with fungal spores to see how they would affect the workers unpacking the crates. For those of you who don't know, fungal spores can cause a number of diseases, including toxic pneumatitis, hypersensitivity, pneumatitis, tremors, kidney failure, and cancer. Not only that, but people argue that the attack was racially motivated. The workers at this center were primarily African American. So the army intentionally exposed, and I quote, a disproportionate number of black people to the organism. Again, this was done without the workers even knowing. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the whooping cough experiment. In 1955, the military released whooping cough into the air in Florida. State records show that in 1955, the amount of whooping cough cases greatly increased. It went from 339 and one death in 1954 to 1,080 cases with 12 deaths in 1955. How in one year does it spike that much? Well, you can thank the military's experiments for that. I mean, what was the purpose of this experiment anyway? To see if people would catch a highly contagious respiratory disease that was spread throughout the city? No, no, they would. In our fourth spot, we have the 24 7 Warrior. Over the years, the military has been working on creating a drug that will keep soldiers up 24 7. Because being sleep deprived as a soldier could end badly for them. Plus, more can be accomplished when you don't have to sleep. Most recently, the military has tested the drug modafinil on soldiers. Apparently, while on this drug, soldiers were able to stay awake for 40 hours straight without any side effects. But they are still conducting other experiments too, like transcranial magnetic stimulation. Basically, it zaps the brain to keep you awake. Doesn't sound that pleasant. They are literally trying to turn soldiers into like brainless kill proof machines. It's kind of scary. Moving on to number three, we have the New York City subway experiment. Honestly, the number of tests done on unsuspecting citizens scare me. What if they're conducting one right now? Well, in 1966, they did a test called A Study of the Vulnerability of Subway Passengers in New York City to Covert Attack with Biological Agents. It's a long name. Why did they just call it Project NYC Subway or something like that? Anyways, this study consisted of breaking light bulbs full of bacteria on the subway tracks to see how they would spread throughout the city. Apparently, clouds would engulf people as trains left the station, and people would just brush off their clothing and continue on their day as if nothing happened. They also found that the trains would spread the bacteria throughout the city. One light bulb full of bacteria broke at 14th Street, spread easily to at least 58th Street, which is insane. Now, the bacteria they decided to use for these experiments was B. globigii, which is a pathogen often the cause of food poisoning. Infections from it are rarely fatal, but they can be. Either way, using innocent citizens as test subjects without their knowledge is very problematic and unethical. In our second spot, we have the Edgewood Arsenal drug experiments. Beginning in the 1950s, the army decided to run some tests on psychoactive drugs and other chemical agents. They're guinea pigs? Soldiers. About 7,000 soldiers took place in these experiments and they were exposed to about 250 different chemicals. Some of the chemicals that were tested on them were sarin gas, LCD, PCP, cannabinoids, irritants, and riot control agents, among lots of others. The effects these chemicals and drugs had on the soldiers were studied and noted. Finally, in 1975, the tests were canceled after being deemed controversial. In the end, most of the test subjects suffered from psychological trauma and serious health problems. And in our number one spot today, we have the plutonium experiment. Towards the end of World War II, the US was racing to build its first atomic bombs. But as they were doing so, they wanted to know about the hazards of plutonium. 
So they decided to start injecting plutonium into individuals to see what would happen. The first test was on April 10, 1945. They injected plutonium into the victim of a car accident in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. They were trying to see how quickly the human body would get rid of the radioactive substance. From there, 400 other experiments took place on humans. They were of course performed illegal without the test subjects knowledge or consent. They were mainly performed on the sick, those with mental illnesses, disabilities, prisoners or the poor. Number 10. Spy Tools Back in August 2016, a group named the Shadow Brokers were the talk of the town. How could you not be with a name like that? That name makes them sound like a comic book villain. The Shadow Brokers? What? But check this out. The Shadow Brokers would basically steal cyber weapons from an NSA hacking unit and then proceed to sell them online to the highest bidder. The Shadow Brokers. I can't lie, it's a pretty sick name. The intentions, however, not so rad, not so radical. These tools have been used by many countries and many schemes. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, you name it. These cyber attacks are also no joke. Once the entire city of Baltimore was under quite the cyber attack, I swear to God, the entire city, the 2019 ransomware cyber attack all connected to said shadow brokers. Yeah, whoever this mysterious group is still remains a mystery. Is it you? If so, click thumbs up on this video. Number nine, hide your bread. Putting your money in your mattress sounds a lot easier than this system, that's for sure. Way less complicated too. Back in 2016, journalists all over the world were looking into what's called the Panama Papers, a plethora of leaked documents. Now these all came from a law firm, Mozak Fonseca. The operation here was that the firm would help the super rich hide their money in these offshore tax havens. And before you ask, yes, they got caught and this whole thing was of course shut down. In total, there were 140 politicians from 50 countries who were all busted, including the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Iceland's former Prime Minister Singunder David Gunlawson. Yeah, y'all guilty. And we found out. Just, just be rich. Just be rich and do the things you have to do when you're rich. Don't hide your money. Number eight, SIM cards. In February 2015, it was reported that Snowden, our good boy Edward Snowden, he provided documents that showed that the NSA and the GCHQ had all hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year to big names. Names like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, you're probably paying for some of these, you name it, right? While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both the voice and data transmissions of every user, i.e. us. The company had actually been the target of at least two sophisticated intrusions, and they believed that the NSA and <laughs> juicy headquarters, GCHQ, were all responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to all these encryption keys. Yeah, no, just, just the dirty text, nothing else. We're good though. Let's just hope that's the case. I mean, honestly, I'm deleting my history anyways, just to be safe. Number seven, military dolphins. Yeah, I said military dolphins. We're gonna get weird now, I guess. Iran has plenty of nuclear capabilities, but they also have trained dolphins now too, so good game. Back in 2000, Iran bought this fleet of trained dolphins from Russia, just, you know, Russians doing Russian things, but they were trained supposedly by the Soviet Union to attack ships, and yes, even people. We have Navy SEALs and military dolphins. This is it, behind the scenes for Aquaman 2, I guess. What's going on here? Well, recently, like 2018 recent, satellite photos revealed a Russian naval base in Syria with pens that are commonly used for holding, you guessed it, dolphins. Yep, the dolphins are back. Ooh. Russia and the US both have fleets of trained dolphins to detect mines, but now Iran's in the mix as well. Is the next world war gonna be dolphins? That would be loud. Number six, secret iPods. Nowadays, it feels like there's a new iPhone or a new iGadget every other day. Technology is evolving a little too fast, I'd say. VR? Not for me, I'm not ready. My body was not ready for that. Music is also personal. Spotify, way too personal. But have you heard of Apple's top secret iPod? Would you get one of these? I'd pre-order it, let's do it. Back in 2005, former Apple software engineer David Shayer revealed that the tech giant once partnered up with the US Department of Energy. This special iPod was designed to test radiation on the go without drawing any attention from the public. Yeah, imagine this thing in an Apple commercial, just dancing silhouettes, having a good time, and then just one guy suspiciously in the background like listening to music. This was of course top secret information back in the day, but Apple secretly helping the government by putting a Giger counter in an iPod for a spy, that's eh, next level, that's shady. We're gonna talk about that on this list for sure. Number five, 
catfish. I mentioned bird drones in part two, so obviously I gotta mention robot android catfish. Yep, you didn't believe them, they've arrived. What are we gonna do now, folks? The general public found out about this hidden spectacle in 2020. Catfish robots, specifically one named Charlie. Yes, it has a name. It isn't like the rest of the fish in school, okay? This one's actually an undercover agent working for the CIA, so. He's a different fish. This all initially happened back in the 90s when the CIA was trying to collect water samples, obviously in secret. So they would send Charlie Chaplips upstream by using wireless communications. That was their high tech, that was their James Bond plan, believe it or not. And yes, this was high tech stuff at the time, all hidden inside the 60 centimeter long catfish. Sometimes spy tech is cool, you know, like a secret iPod, that's, that's neat, we like that. This was not one of them. I don't think Charlie will make an appearance in the next Mission Impossible movie, you know what I mean? I don't think Tom Cruise is going to send up a robotic fish. Number four, caller ID. Back to our boy Snowden for this one, of course. He's so good. How can we not talk about him? The king of leaks, besides Sony, obviously. In 2013, it was revealed by The Guardian that, according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. Yeah, this was done through what's called a business records proposition of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of one George W. Bush. So, this allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. Yeah, all those breakups, all those prank calls, give them. Give them here. This information included things like the time, location, and the duration of your calls. The information also began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Now, of course, once these documents were leaked to the public and this information was, you know, widely spread, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security. Yeah, no worries, guys. We have to do it. We're trying to help you, you know? Help us help you by showing us your tech messages. But many people, like you're probably thinking right now, thought that the spying was unnecessary and it was an invasion of their privacy. I have to agree. Number three, more documents. I mentioned earlier those offshore accounts for those higher ups, you know, those big bad boys. Well, a year later, after that 2016 scandal, even more documents were exposed. All the docs, all around the clock. Docs around the clock. Didn't even script that, that's how good I am. Docs around the clock, we can franchise that. Meaning, even more secrets, even more names. Spill the tea, who is it this time? Well, amongst the 13 million documents, we saw Nike and Apple. Yeah, they're shady, who knew? They had around $250 billion hidden in offshore accounts. On top of that, they were financial connections to the literal Queen of England and Justin Trudeau. Yeah, our, our Canadian lad. We got mad at him a lot for going to his cottage the last few years. Meanwhile, we forgot he's in some offshore accounts. There you go, some more juice to get mad at him about. Number two, Project Dishfire. This one sounds calming, Project Dishfire. Sounds like the best detergent you can get. It was reported by The Guardian that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. Yeah, this is, I'm just exposing all of your secret texts for this one, I was really coming for it. I bet half of these texts literally just say, you up. The government's like, damn it, we'll try again tomorrow. They would then use these messages to pull the details of its user. You know, location, time, contact information, and credit card details. Stuff you don't want out there to anybody. Especially people wearing dress shirts. Ugh, the worst. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of that data, just without the actual context of the text messages. Which is, that's comforting. Basically, they have all this data and at any point they could extract anything they wanted, like older purchases, past travel plans, past financial transactions, all your contacts, regardless of whether or not you're being investigated for anything at all, just because they feel like it. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and quite shady, and it really was. All this happened right before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in response to the Snowden leak, so the timing couldn't be more crucial. And finally, number one, VX gas. The government using gas to take out targets. What is this, Mission Impossible? This is scary, I won't be able to sleep after this. What am I writing? VX gas is tasteless and it's odorless. It can take you out just by skin contact alone. The nerve agent VX is of course extremely illegal as well, obviously. It came from ICIS research from the early 50s when developing new insecticides. And it worked, a little too well I'd say, and it was swiftly and thankfully outlawed. But the bell can't be unrung now, can it be? This was the same nerve gas that was used to take out Kim Jong-nam back in 2017. That was a, a new revelation we discovered. We're like, oh, 
it was this gas. That's terrifying. Yeah, he was attacked at an airport. Two people rubbed a cloth on his face, that's all it took. It was covered in VX, and then he died on the way to the hospital. He had a seizure. How scary is that? Initially, officials thought cyanide was used here, but in reality, it was only 10 milligrams of VX. So far, that's the only confirmed case of VX being used to take somebody out. Again, the only one we know so far, so. Sleep in fear, that's all I'm saying. Starting off this countdown, we have Project Ice Worm. So the military is working on a number of secret projects that we honestly have no clue about. One of these secret projects, which is, I guess, not so secret anymore, was one named Project Ice Worm. This was an army program during the Cold War. Its objective was to build a bunch of nuclear launch sites under the Greenland ice sheet in the Arctic. Literally, a bunch of engineers were hired to build a bunch of underground building type tunnels under the Arctic ice. The plan was to then have missiles ready to launch mobily at any command. But this project was never finished. It was then left abandoned under the layers of ice. It said that they left around 9,200 tons of waste and 53,000 gallons of diesel fuel. Also, there's a bunch of radioactive waste still left down there. And with global warming becoming a bigger problem, people are afraid soon that all the remnants will just be exposed, and this could have a disastrous impact on our Earth. And at number nine, we have the spies. And guys, here's a little friendly reminder to tap that like button, you know, show some love, because it really helps us out. Honestly, there's a lot of jokes going around the internet like, oh, the government is spying on me through my phone, etc. But with the NSA spying scandal, chances are we're actually being watched closely by the government. More closely than we realize. And that's pretty concerning. Like, who knows who's listening into our FaceTimes or phone calls or Zoom calls. And at number eight, we have Kapsutinyar. This is kind of like Russia's Area 51. Basically, Kapsutinyar is a top secret base created by the USSR. It was used for developing the Soviet space program. But now, there's stories of it being home to aliens. Apparently, people saw a large red sphere flying in the sky near it, and some even claim to see a three-eyed alien wearing silver overalls. He's stylish nonetheless. Now, most alien sightings occur near this top secret base. Coincidence? I think not. Could be aliens escaping from the base or something like that. There's even rumors of the base being used to conduct alien autopsies. It's pretty creepy. I don't know if I even want to ever find out what goes on in there. Moving on, number seven, we have Project Super Soldiers. Man, they should have come up with a better name for this secret project. I mean, you can kind of get the gist of what they were trying to do just by listening to the name. Super Soldiers. So basically, back in the day, the military was running some unethical tests on accident victims. And honestly, it would not surprise me if these experiments are still ongoing to this day. So basically, they would take these victims and inject them with plutonium. Others had nerve gas tested on them. And then they would try ESP. In the end, they were hoping to create a super soldier, aka a ruthless killing machine. People that would be invincible, or at least would be more powerful in the field. They truly thought that humans have the power to become greater than we actually are. We just need to access it in our brain, which they would try to do with these tests. Like I said before, apparently they are no longer working on this project, or so they say. And at number six, we have the Inner Armor. This kind of goes along with the last one that I just talked about. This project was also to make soldiers kill proof against a bunch of things like diseases or chemical or radioactive weapons or extreme conditions. So again, they would run a bunch of tests on innocent individuals. They thought that humans could gain some abilities that animals have, like how the bar-headed goose can survive at high altitudes, or the stellar sea lion which can dive deep down in the sea. I mean, I would love to be able to like breathe underwater or at least hold my breath for a long period of time, but still, I don't think that's right for humans. One of the things they would focus on would be retraining the body and brain. Again, we don't know if these experiments have stopped or if the military is still trying to create superhumans. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Area 51. 
I swear, everyone wants to know what goes on in that top secret base. Like, is this where they're doing all these experiments and human testings? Or is it true what they say and the base is home to aliens? Needless to say, Area 51 is home to a number of conspiracy theories. I mean, what is going on in there that requires such high surveillance and defense? Seriously, people have gotten killed for trying to get even close to the building. This has led a lot of people to believe that the military is up to something. Now, in July of 2013, declassified documents from the CIA acknowledged the existence of Area 51 for the first time. In these documents, they said it was a top secret site used to test a bunch of spy planes. But a lot of people think it's not only spy planes they got going on there, but something much more dark and sinister. In our fourth spot, we have Dugway Proving Ground. Area 51 is not the only site that may have suspicious activity going on. There's also Dugway Proving Ground, which is located in Utah. This is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. Again, it's another top secret facility. Like, who knows how many and what kinds of dark deadly weapons they are building and testing there. Apparently the base also contains top secret US military research documents. In 1968, something controversial occurred at this base. On March 13th, a high speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people. It will stop your respiratory muscles from working and you'll literally like choke to death. Anyways, it sprayed it in an area near a farm. The next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. But the facility denied that it was their fault and said that they weren't testing any chemicals that day. Either way, they paid the rancher who lost his sheep over $300,000 and you know, tried to keep this situation hush hush. But that didn't work and people were like, so like what's really going on over there? And at number three, we have Area 6. This is another top secret base that we don't know too much about. So this airbase was spotted in the Nevada desert on Google Earth in 2016. Yeah, someone was on Google Earth and was like, yeah, wait, what is that? Because it was just unmarked. This base is about 12 miles northeast of Area 51. Apparently in 1948 to 1995, over 1,000 nuclear tests were conducted there. It's also believed to be a site used to test military drones. I mean, you can try researching all about Area 6, but not a lot will come up. That's how secretive the place is. And no matter what online articles say about this place, we'll never truly know what goes on behind those closed doors. And at number two, we have mind control. Of course, the military and government have tried a number of mind control experiments. The most famous one would have to be MK Ultra. Basically, these experiments consisted of trying to manipulate the test subjects' mental states and brain function. They were super unethical. Some people were injected with high levels of LSD. Others were subjected to electrical shocks, others were left in isolation or injected with chemicals. All of this was done to see if they could, in the end, control the individual. Now, MKUltra is no longer a secret, but who's to say that they've stopped doing experiments like this? Seriously, the CIA and the military have a huge budget. If they wanted to, they could spend millions of dollars researching into this. They could still be doing tests and we wouldn't even know. And in our number one spot, we have the aliens. Who here believes in aliens? I mean, I just did a video all about alien sightings and now I don't even know what to believe. But if aliens were real, the people that would know the most about them would be the government and the military. A lot of people are convinced that they know all about aliens and are hiding it from us. Good news or Bad news, depending on how you look at it. The Pentagon has like six months to declassify all they know about UFOs. So in a couple of months from now, we may know the truth. Now, I also wanna say that there have been a number of stories of mysterious things happening and then the military showing up to handle it. For example, one police officer shared the time he was called to a crime scene. When he got there, the man had been brutally killed and his arms just ripped off. He said it looked like a monster did it. Then he gets a call from his boss who basically said, hand over any evidence to the men coming. A couple of military looking men came and sealed the scene off and took all the reportings. Like. That is so strange. And then same thing happened to someone that reported an alien sighting. They were then greeted by military looking people that said, don't talk about it. So what's going on with that, huh? 
Starting off our list today, we have the Atlantic Undersea Test and Evaluation Center. This is a facility found in the deep waters of the Bahamas, specifically on Andros Island, where it operates under the aegis of the United States Navy. This undersea range, often dubbed the Underwater Area 51, specializes in testing and evaluating sophisticated undersea warfare equipment, including submarines, sonar systems, and weapons. However, its remote location and secretive missions have ignited the public's imagination, spawning a flotilla of theories and legends. Some aficionados of the mysterious propose that AUTEC is a hotspot for underwater UFO bases or USOs, more on that later, suggesting that its deep sea environs are a playground for extraterrestrial activities concealed beneath the waves. Others weave tales of the center being involved in time travel experiments, covert aquatic human enhancement programs, or even serving as a gateway to lost underwater civilizations. It's a lot going on there. Next up today, we have RAF Rudlow Manor, which is nestled in the English countryside near Corsham, Wiltshire. And this place has long been a nexus of mystery. Originally serving as an RAF operational site, its subterranean complexity and historical depth have rendered it a hotbed for tales of hidden tunnels, secret government archives, and even extraterrestrial encounters. Rumors persist that beneath its innocuous surface lies a labyrinthine network of bunkers and tunnels hosting activities far removed from the public view. These range from UFO investigation units to covert wartime operations. Despite official dismissals, the allure of RAF Rudlow Manor endures, its mysterious facade inspiring a gamut of speculative narratives from clandestine Cold War strategies to alien autopsies. You heard that. Alien autopsies. What's fact and what's fiction? Well, the truth is, we may never really know. Moving on down, we have Fort Meade, which is located in Maryland in the United States, which is perhaps best known as the home of the National Security Agency, more commonly known as the NSA. This is the U.S. entity responsible for global monitoring, collection, and processing of information and data for foreign intelligence and counterintelligence purposes. This high-profile association makes Fort Meade a focal point for numerous theories, largely revolving around surveillance and espionage. People tend to speculate about the depth and breadth of the NSA's capabilities, suggesting it can listen in on any conversation in the world or crack any encryption. While it's very clear that Fort Meade plays a critical role in national security, the secretive nature of its operations fuels public imagination, leading to tales of secret underground facilities, mind control experiments, and other secret operations. Coming up next, we have the Negev Nuclear Research Center, which is located in Dimona in Israel. Officially, the facility is described as a nuclear research center, but its opacity and limited public information have fueled widespread speculation about its true nature and capabilities. Rumors range from it housing an extensive underground city capable of surviving a nuclear apocalypse to being the birthplace of secretive nuclear weapons, despite Israel's policy of nuclear ambiguity, where it neither confirms nor denies possessing nuclear armaments. This veil of secrecy has made the Negev Nuclear Research Center a magnet for conspiracy theorists who speculate that it could be involved in everything, from advanced weapons development to exotic energy research or even extraterrestrial communication. Would this really be a top secret military base if we weren't talking about aliens? Adding to the mystique are international concerns and the cloak and dagger tales of espionage associated with attempts to uncover its secrets, including the infamous case of Mordecai Venunu. That is like, if I ever heard somebody who's like in a tale of espionage, it's someone named Mordecai Venunu, a former technician at the facility who disclosed details about its operations to the British press in 1986. At the end of the day, this place is full of mysteries, most of which we will likely never know the answers to. All right, so just sit and think about that for a bit. 
Coming up next, we have the submarine base New London, located in Groton, Connecticut. This base holds the distinction of being the United States Navy's primary East Coast submarine base. Beyond its official status as a hub of naval prowess and innovation, this storied installation has also navigated through the murky waters of urban legends. While it stands in the open as a testament to maritime military might, whispers of secret operations and even secretive underwater pathways have added layers of intrigue to its reputation. Some speculate about hidden underwater tunnels supposedly connecting it to other strategic points, or even suggesting that it's a testing ground for experimental submarine technologies possibly derived from alien crafts. They say that most of the ocean is still unexplored, but what if they're just saying that so we don't find the secret tunnels? I'm just asking the hard-hitting questions here, all right? Moving on down our list, we have the Pine Castle Impact Range, which is nestled within the Ocala National Forest in Florida. As a bombing and training range used by the US Navy, it is integral for preparing military personnel for various missions, yet it's secluded nature and thunderous sounds of ordnance have sparked grounds for legends and theories. Tales circulate of mysterious phenomena, unexplained noises, and even strange lights. While the range serves a clear military purpose, the combination of its very secretive operations and its remote wooded setting provides the perfect backdrop for these tales to flourish. I mean, to be fair, as a testing range for certain weapons, it definitely makes sense why this place is full of mystery and stories. Sure, it definitely makes quite the impact on those who live in the area. Next up today, we have the Harstad Naval Base, which is located in the strategically important Arctic region of Norway. While primarily recognized as a critical node for NATO's maritime operations in the North Atlantic, the base's secluded and harsh Arctic environment definitely lends itself as a backdrop for tales of covert operations and clandestine activities. Amidst the icy waters and the rugged terrain, some speculate that the base could be involved in everything from monitoring Russian naval activity to secretive underwater research, possibly linked to advanced marine technology or even unidentified submerged objects or USOs. I told you we would talk about them more later. There are some absolutely fascinating tales of USOs that remain completely unexplained. One, the Shag Harbor incident, which took place here in Canada, is actually still listed as a UFO in the official government documents. It's wild to think that they wouldn't be researching those things here, especially in somewhere as mysterious as the Arctic. I don't know, the Arctic is kind of something weird going on there. It's also very cold. All right, this next one is a little different compared to the others today because it is not a fixed installation and instead is a moving object that is the source of much speculation. The Viktor Leonov, a Vishna-class intelligence ship of the Russian Navy, has been the focal point of intrigue and speculation, particularly among defense analysts and conspiracy theorists. Of course. This vessel, renowned for its sophisticated surveillance capabilities, is often covered in mystery as it navigates international waters, ostensibly gathering intelligence. While officially its missions involve signal and communications intelligence, the ship's appearances near other countries' naval bases have fueled theories that suggest clandestine operations, ranging from underwater espionage to interference in foreign communications networks. The alert of the Viktor Leonov lies not just in its high-tech espionage equipment, but also in its very stealthy maneuvers. Its sudden emergence off coastlines, often without any formal announcement, sparks a flurry of media speculation, making it a magnet for tales of covert operations and international intrigue. Whether it's tapping undersea cables or eavesdropping on military exercises, the Viktor Leonov embodies the enduring fascination with the secretive world 
of naval intelligence. Next up, we have Fort Detrick, located in Frederick, Maryland, in the United States. This place is a Army Medical Command installation with a storied past that intertwines pioneering biomedical research with the shadowy realms of biodefense and high-level military experiments. Originally established during World War II, it gained notoriety as the center of the United States Biological Weapons Program until such activities were halted in 1960. Since then, Fort Detrick has pivoted to focus on biodefense, public health, and cancer research, housing some of the nation's most advanced biosafety laboratories. Despite its legitimate scientific achievements, Fort Detrick is enshrouded in a cloak of mystery, fueling urban legends that range from its alleged role in the spread of Lyme disease to speculative connections with the outbreak of mysterious illnesses. The facility's secretive past and high security endeavors have made it a fertile ground for speculations, linking it to various plots in pop culture and conspiracy theory circles. And moving on down today, we have the Wright Patterson Air Force Base, which is nestled in Dayton, Ohio. Ohio is like our second home here on the channel, and for good reason. This base is not just a hub of military aviation innovation, it is a vault of mystique stirring the pot of urban legends. Central to its lore is the legend legendary Hangar 18, which is full of tales of extraterrestrial autopsies, again with the alien autopsies, and of course, UFO research. It's a place where the lines between science and science fiction blur. Critics argue there's no concrete evidence of such activities, yet the base remains an emblem of intrigue fueled by its historical ties to Project Blue Book, the US Air Force's official investigation into UFOs. While while serving as a cornerstone of American aeronautics, Wright-Patterson balances its esteemed legacy with a cloak of mystery. Just like everything should be, you know? A little fact, a little mystery, 